When you see this happening, know that he is near at the gate. This Sunday is the second to last Sunday of our liturgical year. As we approach the end of the church liturgical year, our gospel invites us to consider Jesus' prediction and teaching about the end of the world. Jesus claims, Jesus claims that before the end of the world, his disciples, including you and me, will experience a lot of persecution and tribulations. Are we? Are we experiencing a lot of persecution and tribulation these days? Yes? No? I don't know about you, but when I watch news or read newspapers, I cannot help to see and hear so many persecutions and tribulations happening in our world and perhaps in our family. So last Sunday, sorry, last Thursday, Father Boom and I, we watched ABC News together. Yes, please do watch news. And within half an hour of news, we saw and heard that thousands of people get stuck at the airport and children have to sleep over at the school due to the snowstorm in the East Coast. And in the West Coast, we experienced one of the worst fires that killed 76 people and more than 1,300 missing. Earlier this month, we heard the mass shootings at the Borderline Bar and Grill in Thousand Oaks and at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. And this morning, I woke up with the NPR news reporting that the war in the Middle East is still going on that caused 4.6 trillion, 4.6 trillion so far, and killed thousands of innocent women and children. It forced millions of Syrians fleeing their countries. Speaking of refugees, studies show that war, violence, poverty, and climate change contribute to more than 60 million migrants and refugees in the world. And the most obvious one is our neighborhood. We have a caravan of migrants arrive in Tijuana. What else is happening? We hear and see political divisions in our nation and sexual abuse in our church and our society. These are just the few of persecution and tribulations that are happening in the world. Perhaps you might go through persecution and tribulation or tribulation in your own personal life because of relationship, finance, or health. So how do you and I feel about all of these things happening in the war and perhaps in our personal life? Do you feel like the end of the war? Have you ever wondered where God is in all these things? And what is God saying to you and me today? God has two messages for you and me today. One, I am near at the gate. Have hope. Because I will win at the end. I will send my angels to gather you into heaven. In today's first reading, Daniel spoke to the people who were experiencing persecution from the Greek king Antiochus the fourth Epiphanes during the second century BC. People call him the madman because he persecutes Jews greatly. He taxed people heavily, outlaw Judaism of circumcision circumcision, Torah, Jewish directory laws. And he put the statue of Zeus and sacrificed swine on the altar. And he expect Jews to worship the Greek god. And for those who refuse, he slaughtered them. So within this context of persecution and tribulation, God told Daniel to tell God's people, and I quote, At that time, your people shall escape. And everyone who is founded, written in the book. 
What God is saying that I am here. I hear your cry and tribulation. I will send Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people, to defend you and bring you home with me. Welcome home to my paradise in heaven. Imagine if you live in that time, being persecuted by this great king whom you feel powerless. And this God tell you, I'm here. I will send my angels, Michael, to defend you and to bring you home. Similarly, we hear today's gospel. St. Mark wrote to the Christians who have been persecuted by the Roman Emperor Nero. In the summer of 64 AD, Rome suffered a terrible fire that burned for six days, consuming almost three quarters of the city. That's a huge fire, right? And the people accused this Emperor Nero for the death devastation, claiming that this Nero, King Emperor Nero, He's the one who set the fire for his own amusement. So Emperor Nero was very fearful, and he was devastated. So what did he do? He blamed on Christians. Christians are the one who caused the fire. So he ordered arrest, the arrest of many Christians and put them to death for the amusements of the citizens of Rome. A few years later, Jewish revolutionaries rebelled against the Romans, which led the Romans to destroy the temple in Jerusalem in 70 AD. So precisely in this time of political turmoil and persecution, many Christians in the early church might have wondered if the end times predicted by Jesus was in fact come near. So what did Jesus predict? What did Jesus predict? So right before today's gospel, in the, in, uh, the gospel of St. Mark, chapter 13, Jesus predicted the destruction of the temple and the size of the time. So he told his disciples and us that there will be war, nation against nations, brother will stand over brother to death, children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. What else did he predict? He predicted the earthquakes, famines, false messiahs and prophets. Jesus predicted persecution, because of our faith in Jesus. Did Jesus' prediction come true? You bet. Is, is the war coming to the end? I don't know. But we do know and believe in Jesus' promises. What did he promise? Jesus promised that when you and I see darkness and destruction, suffering and pain and tribulation, he is near at the gate. He is near at the gates. It is hard to believe in Jesus' promises because in the most difficult times of our lives, many of us are more likely to feel a sense of alone and distance from God. It's easy to see summer come after the spring, but it's harder to recognize the winter as the birthplace of spring. Jesus invited the disciples and us to remember that he draws near now in the midst of a chaos of our war. The central mystery of our faith is that death and suffering are not the end. But it's followed by life. Resurrection will come after death. Jesus has conquered the power of death 
and darkness and suffering and has won for us the eternal life and freedom and peace. So Jesus telling you and me, have hope in me, trust me. Have hope because at the end of the day, at the end of the time, Jesus will win and will send his angels to gather his elect from the ends of the earth to the end of the sky. To church, this is such a good news. Jesus is near, and at the end of the world, he will win. If you and I are experiencing persecution or tribulation due to climate change, division in our nations, or other issues, if you and I are feeling the sense of powerless or overwhelmed by so many problems in the world, we are facing with two choices. One, that's the way it is. Two, believe in Jesus' words and promises. I am here, and I will win. I will send out my angels to gather you into my home. What are we going to choose? I hope and pray that we choose the latter. Amen.